asked very frequently is, well, how many people have autoimmune diseases? I mean, are they that common? Well, I'll tell you a really good answer. I used to not be able to have specific statistics except say, look, uh, if you take 10 people, I guarantee you at least two of them have an autoimmune condition that they might not even know they have yet, but they've got it. But there's a study that came out in the last few months done by the U.S. government, by the way, uh, looking at how many people might have autoimmune diseases. Well, what they did is they looked at one specific marker. They looked at something called ANA antibodies. What are ANA antibodies? That stands for anti-nuclear antibodies. So let me back up for a second. An autoimmune disease is when your immune system attacks you. It's not supposed to do that. I mean, normally your immune system is only going to attack things that are tagged as invaders, such as, you know, viruses, parasites, bacteria, uh, cancer cells. But when there's an autoimmune condition, the immune system mistakenly, because it's a mistake, thinks that some of your tissue is the invader and it needs to be attacked and killed. Well, anti-nuclear antibodies are made by the immune system so that the SWAT team of your immune system can find it and kill it. And so it's actually killing part of the inside of your cell, the nucleus, anti-nuclear. Okay, that's where that comes from. And ANA antibodies are used a lot of times when someone has joint pain or they have fatigue or when they, like you go see your GP and you're like, you know, I have had this chronic joint pain or I've had chronic muscle pain or I think I might have rheumatoid arthritis or I might have uh, systemic lupus or I might have uh, mixed, connect uh, mixed connective tissue disease. What the loot is will run this ANA antibody test. And these antibodies, just so you kind of get the concept, antibodies are like little flashing strobe lights that are made by the Th2 division of your immune system to attach onto something that's been tagged as an invader so that the SWAT team can come in and kill them. So the government has actually done some statistical analysis and looked at how many people have positive ANA antibodies. And here's the number. Here, here's how many people have autoimmunity based on one lab test. 32 million. 32 million Americans have positive ANA antibodies. And believe me, I think that's actually probably underreported because some people will never test positive for those antibodies because they, because of their particular immune system situation. Their Th1 uh, system is higher than their Th2 and it's the Th2 that makes the antibodies. But this is very, very interesting. So it's epidemic. I mean, to me, that fits the definition of an epidemic. And people that have positive ANA antibodies might have fatigue, they might have joint pain, they might have, uh, they could have any number of named conditions like Sjogren's, rheumatoid, mixed connective tissue disease, but that is only one autoimmune disease that they looked at. If you were to throw in Hashimoto's, which is the most common cause of hypothyroidism, I mean, you, you can throw another 10, 20 million people on the top of that, Pro probably more, frankly. If you throw... Um, rheumatoid arthritis, if you throw Sjogren's in there, if you throw uh, multiple sclerosis, there are multiple tens of millions of people in this country with autoimmune diseases and they're growing. Why are they growing? Well, it's a combination of factors. It's environmental toxicity, it's food sensitivity, it's psychological stress. You throw all those things together, it's a very uh, turbulent mixture and it's ripe for giving people the triggering of a lot of autoimmune diseases. So what do you do for autoimmune diseases? Well, that depends. I mean, you understand that really all of them are kind of the same problem at root. Your immune system has turned on you. You've broken your tolerance for yourself. What you do about it depends on your individual situation. But I can tell you there's some very important things you have to look at. You have to look at food sensitivities. Uh, you have to look at specific vitamin deficiencies of things that will regulate your immune system. You have to look at your own psychological stress. You should know that the standard sort of approach for most autoimmune conditions from a medical model is to give you steroids. Um, and they really won't even diagnose you with any of these named conditions until you have enough damage for them to show that you've got it. Here's what I mean. So for example, if you've got ANA antibodies, well, they really don't do much for that until you've got like a lot of symptoms or you've got some like, you know, tissue damage that they can point out. And then they'll start prescribing uh, steroids. But, you know, steroids are, are really no way to live because they have their own consequences. There are things you can do, but you've got to find someone who will be a detective and figure out what's causing this current amount of autoimmune inflammation. Because you can't cure autoimmune diseases. That's one last thing I want to leave you with. 32 million people have positive ANA antibodies, but you cannot cure autoimmune diseases. They are genes in your body that have switched on, and you cannot switch them off. Anybody ever tells you they can cure them is lying to you. Now, can they be made 
better? Can they be slowed down so much that you can feel like maybe you don't have one? The answer is yes, if you do the right thing. So you've got to find someone that can take a functional approach to autoimmunity.